The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? Well, I'm ready. You know what I'm ready for? I'm ready for the Joe Biden lockdown 100 days. Did you hear about that, Tom? No, what's the 100 day lockdown? I, I just heard at the first day in office, he's going to throw a 100 day lockdown. Oh, that's good. That's real good. That's really good. That's you know what? We need that time. We could just be in our prayer closets and just be rocking the world. Imagine, imagine, imagine on the lockdown. Boom. If everyone was just on the prayer. Oh, my God. Dude, something crazy would happen. Revival. We're, it would just break out. But we'll see what happens. We are. So I got Tom Gillis in studio. I had him here before. Uh, I don't even remember. It was at least a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, actually, it was recent. It was uh, the week before I, New Year's Eve. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Your show was on here. Yep, yep. Ex-pro snowboarder. Yep. Uh, world records, doing the whole thing. And the testimony was amazing, but I wanted to bring you back because there's so much more that you have to say. Yeah. That's why we're here. No, for sure. And I want people to know what you got going on, how you're living the Great Commission. Yeah. Talk about the church you're working with and just, um, you know, you're, you're actually in one of our films that's coming out soon. And you've been going on uh, tours with us. You're one of the ambassadors of the whosoever's. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things about you. Yeah. And we're going to talk about just how God's using you. And I, I just honestly want to have a conversation because we're homies. Yeah. Um, and not keep it all corporate, but just like, what the heck is going on in the world right now? Yeah, dude, <laughs> I have no idea. Like, I don't even want to know. I, uh, I know you and I text a lot back and forth, and we send yeah. each other things that will blow each other's minds and just like, ah! And we're stoking, but um, God's on the move. Yeah. Uh, like you know, everyone freaks out as this end times, and you know, I just tell everyone yes because when Jesus left, He said, "I'll come back," mm-hmm. and in between that time, we're waiting. And uh, but waiting is not something you do um, just uh, casually. You wait in expectance. And uh, you know, I was a Christian for like 17 years, and uh, it was all good, but it was lame. It was lame because I was trying to fit into other people's ideas of what Christ was. I was supposed to, you know, look like a certain way yeah. and do a certain thing. And then you get pissed. Mm-hmm. And I, at least I did. Yeah. And I was like, Lord, um, if you, I started daring him again. You know, I, I told you I dared him to show up if he was real. But then I started being like, man, I'm going to give you this. Do something. Oh, I, I want to actually yeah. uh, open that up really quick. You, you were not a Christian and yeah. you said, God, and you, you didn't cry. And yeah. you're like, I'm going to go to church. Yeah. And if you're real, yeah, make me cry. Yeah, so and that happened, dude. Straight up, like I didn't cry when I blew my knee. I didn't cry when I land thirty feet onto rocks. Like I just, I, I drove myself to the hospital after being in accidents, and I was, I was hard. Yeah, um, because I wanted to be that guy. Yeah, um, but I said, Lord, if you're real, make me cry. I said yeah. it in my bedroom. No one else could hear it. No one else knew that mm-hmm. was the promise. I, mm-hmm. I, I committed to God, yeah. and He showed up. And he keeps showing off. And um, yeah, I, I got it. God, our God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, he's a man of his word. He said it, it's going to happen. So exactly. he said he's coming back, it's happening. And so am I going to put my trust in politicians? Am I going to put my trust in pastors? Am I going to, I'm going to just, I have to always go back to what he says because mm-hmm. we can all get off track. It's super easy. I know you have, I know mm-hmm. I have. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, um, 17 years walking with the Lord, but like really, really, really the last five years, mm-hmm. I started going, people are dying in this book. Mm-hmm. People are like stepping out in faith. People, and, and, and no it, one's. It's that righteous anger. Yeah. It's that righteous anger of like, dude, we need, you need to be so mad. You have to be angry at what Satan is doing and how he's getting a grip on people. And to you, have, you, to your house, yes. to your friends, yes. to everyone. And I think yes. you've said it really well. You mm. said that, you know, uh, G- God calls, Jesus calls us to be fishers of men, yep. but Satan is also a fisherman. Yep. And he, yes. he gets his hooks. And when you said that, I was like, I always talk about the hooks, right? And he's mm. a great deceiver. He walks around like an angel of light, yep. roams around like a lion. Right. But he gets those hooks in you mm. and he pulls you off path. He mm. pulls, he uses your ego, your pride, mm-hmm. your, your flesh, your sex, just trying to pull you off of what you are called to do, what you are anointed to do, what God planned for you to do. I just thought of this little like illustration when you said that. Like, think about if you're walking through life, and because Satan is a fisherman and he he hooks us with with different lures, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you got the shiny lure with the rainbow bait. That's like the pornography. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you got the 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 little white lies that you're using at work to advance. For sure. And then he hooks you with like. Uh, you know, wanting to cheat on your wife, or then yeah. uh, the the money, 
And all of a sudden you think about you, if you analyze yourself right now, where yeah. you're at, listening to the radio show, what are the things that are that Satan has these hooks on? What are these things that are pulling you? Because all those lures are made to do is to pull you away from God's purpose. Yeah. Because God lays out the path that says that he is a lamp to your feet yeah. and he will lead and guide you. Now, if you're on that path of Christ and the word is he's leading you, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, but my porn's acting up again. Boom, that's that little hook. Yeah. And then this other thing. Well, what happens is, just like any other fisherman, when you hook that fish, you know, it might be like a... You know, I went deep sea fishing in um, in South Africa one time. We went marlin fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Big we fish. hooked that thing, but <laughs> it, that thing it, it it literally was like we, we could barely we could, we couldn't even like reel that thing in. It yeah. was so gnarly. Yes. But what we did do to that marlin though is that we slowed him down. And we nevertheless we did have control of him. Yeah. He couldn't do what he wanted to do. Yeah. But we weren't able to reel him in completely, but he just compl we completely slowed him down. And yeah. that's what Satan wants to do. Obviously, yeah. eventually, just like every fisherman, yeah. he wants to catch you, wants to reel you in, wants to cut you in the middle, yep. gut you, and yeah. kill you, and eat you, yeah, basically. You. Yeah. But that's what Satan does with, yep. with, these, uh, with these hooks. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I, I call it holy boldness. Like, you have to be able, like, we get to walk into the throne room of God. Right. That, like... You get to do that. So why would you be lying to him in the throne room? Mm -hmm. Why? Like, you can't do that. So you got to get angry, like, that you're still stuck in your sin, that you're still doing. And mm -hmm. I, I get angry a lot, still yeah. with myself. Like, yeah. why, why, why? Yeah. But you better be complaining to the guy that can do something about it. And right. that's our that's our God. And, and he will cut the, 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 he will take the hooks out. He will, But it, you got to let the Holy Ghost in. Do you think that... Um just with everything that's going on, you know, obviously Absolutely. we've seen everything with with politics and yeah. we're, we're the, the state of the world and yeah. the censoring of social media and just all this noise. It's it's yeah. really noisy right now. Yep. It, it's really crazy where I've seen a lot of people that are actually getting off social media. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I just saw one of my friends. Um, uh, I was actually I was actually really stoked. I didn't see you post for a little bit, and I, I was like, that was so rad. I was so proud of you. Just yeah, I haven't I haven't posted for a while. Um, it was almost. Just, it was just like two radio shows back yeah. to back. It yeah, was like yeah, two, yeah. And I was only do that because my two friends were on the show, you <laughs> and Jessica. Yeah. But I wouldn't have posted for for yeah. for weeks. I'm not even like. I'm not even watching this stuff. I'm right. just kind of like. Do you know? What, do you know? What, do you know when it was all going down? Do you know what I did? Mm -hmm. I ended up hiking up in the hills and I was digging these mountain bike trails by my house. Like yes. I, I turned everything off and yeah. I was like, and I was just praying. And you know what? Like I think we need to reintroduce prayer to the world because no, not a lot of people. Uh, like no one taught me how to pray. Mm -hmm. Like and and I I had I had my buddy. Uh, from Nicaragua, tell me that I pray white, and I was like, "Dude, what, what, what? Pray white? No what way. are you talking about?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get before God, and you go, oh Lord, oh Lord, have mercy on me. And you bow down, and you like trying to use all these big words to monosyllabically express yourself. And like, if you did that to me every day, like I'd be sick of you, like because." It's a conversation like you and I are having. Like right. you need to talk to God all the time. How are you supposed to do that constantly, being on your knees? Like you're just clinging your little, you know, symbols and just trying to be all holy when you're just not being real. Well, you're, you're yes. Okay, <laughs> gonna, we're gonna keep building on this. Yeah. So you're married. Yes. Imagine if you talk to your wife like that every day. If that was your relationship, yeah. Because our because our relationship with God is is a re it's a relationship. Oh, for sure. So if you're like, oh, yeah, please forgive me. Everything yeah. that she'd be like, dude, already Just stop. Get over like, it. Can we, can we talk about something no. else? And I have yeah. I've had that in a in a, in a, a guy's group. The guy, you know, I like basically say, dude, you're forgiven. Get over it. Get over and it. I was like, you're such a jerk. Yeah. Like that hurts. And he's like, yeah, get over it. And so there is this. Like we do have to get over ourselves and it's not about us. And that's what I think bigger picture with all this stuff that's going on, like social media, it's all about you. Check me out. That's I, I get the um, vision from weird science, the movie back in the day with the guys standing in front of the gym and the girls and they get the pants and it's like, yo, check me out. Like, that's what I think. Like social media is yeah, like, check yeah. me out. Look at me. Look what it I'm is. doing. It and is. then um, you have politics where people find their like faith and their religion, and their identity, uh, identity in, politics, yeah. in that. Like, and uh, God says like, you should have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. Dude, mm -hmm. pornography is a god. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, social media is a god. Mm -hmm. uh, politics is a god. Mm -hmm. Like, when are we gonna like get that right? Like, and how you make it just for the listeners? Yeah. How, so you might be saying, well, how is that a god? Because anything that you put before God, yeah, 
Like, for instance, you're like, I don't have time to go to church on Sundays because I, I'm watching football games every yeah, Sunday. Absolutely. And therefore, you're not going to church. And you're like, well, you, now you put, you put that game or football. Now, football is now your God. Yeah. Or baseball or whatever it is, ahead of God. So therefore, he that is the Lord of your life. Yes. It's lording over your life. Yeah. That's, and that's good. how things become God's. No, that's solid. And I think we do that. We do that whenever someone asks you, well, what do you do? Well, who are you? Or what I'm an American. Well, I love America, first of all. I am I, I Heck love yeah. America. Yep. But if Christ wants to judge it and do what he's gonna do with it, he's gonna do with it. Mm. I first and foremost, I wanna follow God. And if I look like crazy, so I look crazy. Yep. You look at all the prophets before him, they were exiled. Mm -hmm. Everyone was kicked out. Mm -hmm. Dude, you, you know, I, I, you, we all want to be liked, mm -hmm. but we're loved mm -hmm. because God is love. You and know, we I, was, have love. I was thinking about how, you know, you just said how the prophets were exiled and all that stuff. And, you know, as I was looking at just culture and everything that's going on right now, you know, you have the churches. Yeah. You know, we're part of a large church. You're yeah. part of a, a large church, yeah, too. Yeah, Bayside. Uh, Bayside. Bayside, up, in, up, up north, and then we just started a campus down here in, in uh, Orange County. So yeah. you're you're part of uh, 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 larger churches as well. And, yeah. um, you know, we don't know. I was just doing an interview yesterday, actually, for this magazine, and, and they were interviewing me about, you know, reaching Great Commission. And I yeah. said, you know, these mega churches and all this, these big churches, they're awesome and they they do great things. Just or just churches in yeah, let's just say churches churches are, in general. Yeah, in yeah, general, yeah. churches are great, sure. obviously. Now, with everything that's going on in government and these agendas of of them trying to shut down church services, but strip clubs are open in San Diego. Yeah. You, know, you go to the gun store, you can go to the liquor store, yeah. you know, the weed dispensary down. When I go, when I come to this radio show on Saturday nights, there's yeah. actually a, a Del Taco I go by. Yeah, I like the Del Taco tostada for some dude, reason. I, I don't understand, know what I understand. Understand. It's, it's, but, uh, it's the greasy grease. <laughs> yeah, so I had I had to get that on Saturday night sometimes. But um, this weed dispensary, <laughs> yeah, it's dude. Hack. I can't even find parking yeah. to, to go to the Del Taco because the, the weed dispenser. Anyway, <laughs> long story short, with all that said, you know, I was just saying, you know, if if the church at large, and I'm talking about, well, I guess, you know, I talked to my friends in Australia and New Zealand, they're on track and trace. So everything's shut down. Yeah. Like, this is like a world, UK just shut down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Biden said they want to lock everything down for 100 days. Yeah. So, like, it's going to get worse yeah. as far as lockdown. Now, if people's mentality, the church mentality, as in leaders and, and people that are operating the church, if they're thinking, oh, we're, we got to reach people, but we got to get the big bands, we got to do the crusades, we got to do the big outreaches, all these things... That might not happen for years to come. No, for so sure. what God's doing right now or what is happening during this time that God is allowing, because he allows everything, he calls yeah, the shots, right? Absolutely. It's 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 going back to the basics of the Gospels. Yeah. It's going back to what did Jesus do? He got the disciples, he called them, yeah. and they went from town to town, city to city, and they went in twos, and he said to take nothing. Yeah. Now, Things have changed. You know, we have cars, different things. Yep. But wait, but wait, can, in essence, what is he saying? He's just like, you don't need, you don't need this whole production. You don't need this production. <laughs> yeah. And like, in the way that when I say the church, because this show is to encourage people to yeah. think different. Yeah. The word of God is the same, but we got to think about different ways and being creative how to reach people. Yeah. So, but what's so funny is it's going back to the roots. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like, go to, town to, go to town to town. Yeah. Go to city to city. Yeah. And the villages. Then what did the, the disciples do? They went from house to house. They yeah. did that. And H have you have you ever gone to house to house? No, dude. We did that in Nicaragua because yeah. I got I got a nonprofit that does stuff in Nicaragua. Yeah. We go door to door, knock, yeah. and just ask if we can pray. Yeah, it's awesome. Amazing. Like you, you like you like you weep with people, and they everyone will tell you like. I, if you ask anyone, can I pray for you? They'll say yes. yes I don't care. I, I don't care. I, I don't agree. care who you are. I don't care. Like you could be the the biggest atheist. I don't believe in anything. And then you go, okay, okay. So you don't like the word prayer. Can I be? Can I give you positive vibes or anything? Can I, <laughs> and yeah. then they're like, in Jesus' yeah, name, I, I, I would like that positive vibe. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it. Like we want to be prayed for. No, I agree. Yeah. And, and with that said, going along with those disciples did. Yeah. Then. It goes into where Jesus meets with them, and he tells them, you know, they're breaking bread in the morning, and yeah. they realize it's Jesus, and he yeah. says, go to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit, and then go basically send it, right? So what happens is, from there, the book of Acts starts. They go, they start tearing it up. Um, people are dying. Stephen gets stoned. Yep. 
uh, it, it, the 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 Christianity, the way, or you know whatever yeah. it was called back in those days. Yeah, the way, yeah. They were they were uh, the Romans. This was not no. This was not accepted. It was it was it was not accepted in culture. It was frowned upon. Yeah, and they, they crucified Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is very crazy times that they're living in to be get, to be gospel gangsters to be getting it out right. Yeah. yeah. So then Paul persecuting, killing Christians, putting them in jail, the whole thing. They reveal it. He gets revealed. Uh, Christ reveals himself to him. Yeah. He gets saved and he's going out. He's getting stoned. Riots are breaking out. It's crazy. And what I was thinking about the other day about this whole book of Acts thing and the Gospels and going back to the basics of Christianity of reaching people, this is the times that we're living in right now. Amen. Because yeah. churches are getting shut down. Yep. You can't talk about Jesus, uh, God in the in the in the uh, uh, in the um, schools. Yeah. But now, since the Democratic Party has taken <clears throat> over the lip, the more liberal party, yeah. the the far left, they are anti God. They did that prayer, a man and a woman. Yeah. Some pastor guy dividing. Yeah. Yeah. So there's all this stuff that's going on. Yeah. That don't think, don't count on churches being open. A longer time. It's gonna get so crazy. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be the guy of of, of bear bad news. <laughs> no. But that we gotta prepare ourselves that yeah. it could, it could, we'll yeah. say. No, no, no. And and for me, I'm going like, you know what? This is an awesome time for us yes. as believers, because it is so dark. And yes. I'm going, man, let your light shine. Let's start praying. Yeah. Uh, let's not forsake the gathering of the brethren. Yeah. Let's freaking get together and let's see what God is up to because he is up to something. Yeah. I, and, I, yeah, go. I no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. And this is, this is the encouragement. Yeah. Is that this is the time that the church has to get serious. Serious. We have to seize this opportunity. Yeah. We can meet together. Yeah. We're in churches now. Yeah. Dude, one of my one of my favorite guys says, uh, casual Christians will be casualties. Yes. And it's just yes. like, dude, yes. this is where everything is getting stripped away. Yes. And and are you going to stand up? Are you going to stand together? I, lo I love hanging with you guys, the whosoever's, being part of that movement because we just, we roll. And, you know, you get flack when you're going to lead. When you're going to be in front, when you're going to be going out and doing stuff, you're going to get shots from the back. And I can tell you, the church, a lot of people in the church will shoot at you. A lot of people on the outside, the devil hates you. Mm -hmm. And and you know what? I think I think I share with that. That's my desire is to be hated in hell. Like we got to get after it. Mm -hmm. And we just have to just let the gospel be the gospel. Let the God of the universe be the God of the universe. And let's just be obedient. Right. Like, let's be obedient. Yeah. He says, go, go. Yeah. Yeah. Send it. Send it. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's 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 the whole thing with right now is we gotta we gotta know the signs of the times. Yep. We have to watch Jesus is coming. Yep. What does God want us to do? Yep. And don't take I guess my point was don't take church for granted. No. And the relationship with Christ and get ready because it's getting crazier. Yeah. And this is why the harvest will get ripe. Yep. Jesus says it, and I mean, or is in the uh, well. Jesus obviously says it in, in Mark thirteen. He talks about the last days. Yeah. But there's also this scripture. I can't think of where it's at, but it's in the New Testament. It's one of the epistles that Paul writes, and he just talks about the, in the last days they'll be lovers of themselves. Yes. They'll be prideful. They'll, you know, it goes yeah. on and on. I can't. I'll have to yeah. look it up after at the break. But basically, um, if when you read that scripture, yeah, those scriptures together, those verses, you're like, oh my gosh. This is like literally where we're living. Yep. But when you look at what happened in, the, in Christ's days, it's not so far different. I mean, it's it's the same. There's persecution. Yeah. There's there's, there's churches that are the churches are getting persecuted. Yep. What was happening in the book of Acts? Churches are getting persecuted. Yep. Remember, yep. they were they were, the apostles were getting arrested and they're yep. knocking. They're like, "Hey, dude, they're at our front door. But we'll let them in." You yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah. But they still kept gathering and they, they kept still gathering. kept praying. Yes. And like, yeah. I think God is calling us into the season of going like. Hey, I, I know I know I have just been in anguish over prayer. Like I've been waking up praying. I've been going to sleep praying. I've been like, oh Lord, like just have your will, have your way. And then I think ultimately prayer just really sifts you and then goes through your motive. What's your motives? Yeah. Like, and I, God, I know our God of the Bible. He says, not one shall perish. That's his desire. Not one shall perish. And yet, how what's he gonna use? Plan A is his children. We're his children. Mm -hmm. So why aren't we going out? Why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we, why, we need to gather no matter what? We need to be praying. And it, it, I think there's just something right now where God's just calling it. Let's pray and let's see what I can do. Because he makes the impossible possible. Yeah. And that's what that's our God. Yeah.
Yeah, it has so, to be. It has to be done in prayer because that's where the that's where the power. Yeah, that's where God moves and shakes, and He can do more in a second than we can do in our lifetime. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's no, no, but no. we try to do it on our own, and and well, and, and that's ultimately the the foolishness. God does not need our talents. God does not need our our help. He needs our hearts, mm-hmm. and when if we're gonna open ourselves up, and and this is I, you know, a lot of my time, my text is I'm like, come Holy Spirit, come, come, mm-hmm. come Holy Spirit, because I need wisdom. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't have it. I hit my head too many times. Yeah. I don't have it. Like yeah, I, no. but everything needs to be downloaded. And that's yesterday what I was doing, or up in the mountains when I was up in the mountains digging my mountain bike trails. I was just going. I need to I need I need a new download. I need a fresh perspective. I need to see it not for what it is, but for what you're doing. Yeah. Yep, totally, totally. Well, this is uh, in studio. I have Tom Gillis. Uh, he was on the show before. He's out from um, Bayside Church up in Northern California. They're launching a new church in, what's the college again? Orange, uh, Vanguard University. Vanguard University yeah. in Orange County. Yeah, during well, a pandemic. Yeah, hey, you know what? <laughs> That's what happens when you pray. That's it. Things happen. That's it. The impossible. Yes. I posted this the other day on my social media. Yeah. Um, Jesus' words... And he says this, it's from John. He says, yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. You know, to this morning I was listening to uh, K-Wave, which the station is one of the stations this is on. And Greg Laurie was on there. You familiar with who that is? So he was on there and he was talking about, he was like, okay. So the guy was asking yeah. uh, Greg, interviewing Greg on his own radio yeah. show. So he was like, "So what would this Greg now, two thousand, you know, twenty one Greg, uh, uh, tell Greg forty years ago?" Yeah, and he's like, he was just basically saying in a nutshell, like, "God is going to do incredible things in your life. You're going to go through a lot of hard times." Right. But you are going to be more fulfilled than you ever have in your life, and you're going to do greater things than you ever can imagine. Yeah. But so you're going to go through. Uh, yeah, he lost, his, he son. lost his son. I mean, all, you know, I actually heard him do his testimony uh, for like probably 40 years ago. Like, li- like his voice was up, really up high. You know, he was He's describing like all yeah. the DB weebies, all the stuff like back in the day, and uh-huh. all like all his surfers and his his life and dude. That guy, like, if you knew what you were going gonna go through, you'd probably say, "I'm out." You'd tap out. Heck yes. And and, and, and someone told me this when I was mount- I, I love mountain bike. I love anything. Getting after it. But, but someone told me like when you ride alone, you'll quit at forty percent. Like forty percent of what you're capable of, you'll quit if you're on your own. But if you're with someone, which you were talking about, be going and out twos. two by twos. Yep. But like if you're with someone, you'll push eighty to a hundred percent of what you could. And then if that that same person is encouraging you. Frick, you're going to do your PR. Like, you're going to do your best of your best. And I think that's a huge indication of we can't do this alone. And we need to really, like, pair up. We need to really trust God. And we need to, like, know that, like, life is not going to be easy. I think that's, I think casual Christians, like, if I pray, God's going to give me everything and everything's going to be, he's not a genie. He's not a genie. It's it's not about you. And we keep flipping it about us, right? And I trip out because I always when I read this book, I'm always going like, "Oh Lord, who am I supposed to save?" That's what I think easily. And I, and God's like, "Hey, you're the prostitute. You're going to cheat on you're going to cheat on me today. To humble yourself. Like get right. Like and I love that you always pray and you're like, "Forgive me, I'm a sinner." I love that. Mm-hmm. Cuz every day if you're going to go out, your feet are going to get dirty, it needs to get washed. Mm-hmm. 100%. Love yep. that stuff. With all that said, um, what uh, so what do you, what do you think about uh, like what do you think being a Christian now in this time? Yes, with everything that's going on. Yes, how are you guys, your church, or what the ministry you're working with, and yeah. your guys' agenda and plan to reach? Obviously, you're planning a church in the college, which is awesome. Yep, yep. Planning church is always great. Yeah, wherever skate yep. park. Yeah, anywhere. Uh, high school. Anywhere. Uh, Anywhere, yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically. But what, what, like, what do you think? Or actually, here, this is the better question. Yeah, you work with youth. Yeah, ton. 
What are you seeing with the youth during this time? What's the feedback? What are the stories that you're yeah. hearing? What's what's the pulse with what's going on with the youth? You know what? I think they have been more marketed to, more uh, you know, basically manipulated, more and like in any other time. Like then just trying everyone's in their brain, everyone's trying to tell them so they have a BS reader that is off the charts. Mm. If, if, if you try to BS them, if you try to like tell them and you know, when we talk about testimony, when we talk about the story of God's glory and what we're up to, like, you got to just be legit. You got to just be real with people. And I think the kids see through BS a mile away because of all of the social media, because of all the way that, that people are trying to influence them. And really, influence is just leadership. And so, like, if you want to connect with these kids today, you just got to be real. I always talk about it being open kimono, dude. I got nothing to, right. I got nothing to sell, nothing to hide. Yeah, you're uh -oh. not packaging it. You're not manufacturing. No. You're not no. dressing a certain way. No. It's funny because I've oh, in that interview that I did yesterday, I was also yeah. talking about um, about because we were talking about reaching people, but and yeah. I was talking about you have to be authentic. Yeah, just like who you are doesn't yeah. matter. I don't care if you're old. Yeah, you know if you wear turtlenecks or you know whatever it is, you just got to be who you are, yes. and, and God will use that. Yeah. And you just got to be authentic to the kids because if they know they, 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 that you actually care about them, yeah. well, it doesn't matter who you are. Right. You know, but if you're coming in. Trying to sell something. Sell something. Trying, like to, I, trying I, to manipulate them. I'm trying to get them to pray that prayer. Like, yeah. dude. Close the deal. Yeah. Well, I, I've, even had, <laughs> I've even had pastors come up to me, youth pastors or even pastors or just people. Yeah. Over the years. And be For like, sure. Yeah, you know. I think I've heard this like at least five times. Yeah, I'm, I was thinking about just getting a bunch of tattoos so I could reach people. And I'm like. Dude, that's like you're a poser. <laughs> you're a poser. And I yeah. in our interview, I said, dude, I, I have no tattoos. Yeah. I never got tattoos. I was always too high and drunk, and I knew I'd make a bad decision. <laughs> dude, me too. Like, I, I, I am tat free because I the thing I wanted was, man, I'm so glad I didn't get that. <laughs> exactly. Because you can't, I knew the mindset I was in. I'm like, yes. There's no way I can make a rational decision right now. And you know, that's permanent, you know? Oh, yeah. So anyway, but these guys are like, yeah, I'm going to get tattoos so I can reach the youth. And I'm like, dude, we haven't, I, I don't have one tattoo on me. I've read, you know, actually, I'm not yeah, going to go yeah, into yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, so you don't need that. Yeah, you got to be transparent to, to reach the generation and, and to reach anyone. You got to be just super transparent. And I always talk about, like, I get weirded out when people are like, uh, Jesus, 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 because one, He's my homie. I love him. He's my savior. He's everything to me. But like, if you don't know him, why would we talk about him like that? That's like if you and I were talking and I'd be like, hey, my buddy Steve. Hey, my buddy Steve. Hey, you got to meet my buddy Steve. Check out my buddy Steve. And you'd be like, dude, I don't know Steve. Why do we keep talking about Steve? Yeah. And so for real, like I'm all like, hey, I have a friend. We talk about it. We get real. We get transparent. And I'm like, dude, this is where I was at. And then, you know what? Jesus came in and blew it all up. Yeah. Jesus will ruin your life. I'm going to leave it right there at that because we're going to pick up and talk more about all this good stuff. All right. Um, I did find that verse. It's cool. in uh, 2 Timothy verse chapter 3, 2 to 5. It says this, For people will love only themselves, their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving, unforgiving. They will slander others, have no self-control. They will be cruel, hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, wow. be puffed up, wow. and pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Amen. Hardcore. Amen. So I do have a big announcement. I have a book coming out on Hatchet uh, Publishing and Worthy. It's called Kill the Noise. Wow. Finding Meaning Above the Madness. Can this book no. have a better name for this time perfect, perfect. in culture Absolutely. this is insanity and how long how long did it take you to write it because god i did it in i did it in 2020 gosh god was already organized he put it on your heart you did it and then right yeah now. It, the door opened in 2020 wow. during the pandemic we yeah. went on lockdown and yeah. i cranked out the book and it's pu it's Amazing. it's going into publishing it'll be coming out in may right now if you go to amazon barnes and nobles uh, dot com target yeah uh, uh, I don't know any of those Get places. It. You can find it all. It's all there. Yes, it's under Ryan Reese. Kill the noise. Awesome. Uh, you'll find the book. Pre-order it. It's a faith-building book, and that's it's it. A discipleship, really. It's I mean, a it discipleship. Talks, it talks about. So it. we'll be back right to more of the Ryan Reese show coming up. Post your questions yes, at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook.
back, back to the Ryan Reese Show. All right, we're back. Um, I got Tom Gillis in studio from Bayside Church. He actually runs the the part of the youth program. He's like uh, the outreach guy there, and they're starting a church down at. Um, I always mess up the name. What's this? What's this? Vanguard called? University. Vanguard. You could tell I never went to college. Yeah, yeah. Vanguard I'm like, University. Uh, where? Well, where is that? Is that in Alaska? Yeah. It's uh, actually in my hometown. In uh, uh, not my hometown, but it's in my city, yeah. my my county, Orange County. Yeah. All right, check it out. So before the break, you said some crazy comment. Yeah. I said, you said Jesus will, will ruin your life. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, your life wasn't worth living before Jesus. You were living for yourself. You were doing things that you know you shouldn't, and we all been there. And, like, you know, I, I heard someone once say, like, are you living for, work, it, for what Christ died for? And like when you come to like he will take all your hopes and dreams and like he he puts them in your heart. But we get off track. We were talking about the, you know, hooks, the hooks, uh, Satan, money, power, all that stuff will get you off track. And like you were created for a reason and a purpose. And when you are not walking in his will and his way, like you might have everything which you and I both had Mm -hmm. and it's empty. It's meaningless. You know, everyone wants to be you except you. And uh, because no, you can't even accept yourself. So it's like your your whole idea about the identity crisis. Like Mm -hmm. we're all experiencing it. And when you accept Jesus in your Lord and Savior, when you say, "Dude, your will, your way, go," yeah, He will ruin some things Mm -hmm. because you had false idols, you had false motives, you like wanted it was all about you. I always go back to the the garden and like what happened when they ate of the tree, right? They they became Genesis, Genesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They became self aware, self absorbed, self centered. And you just then read Timothy where it's yeah. like, you're going to love yourself. You're going to be all about yourself. Like, we're just still eating of the fruit, man. It's, and it's so empty, man. Dude, it's, it's so, empty. so yeah. empty. Horrible. It's so empty in that life. And that's why you need God to come in and ruin all that stuff in your life. Destroy. Yeah. Destroy yeah. the lust of the, the kill, flesh. He yeah, talks about kill, it first, kill, first John. Kill the lies. Yeah. Kill, kill the lies. You know, and, and, and then we were talking about, like, you got to get right with God. So you got to look upward. And then you got to look inward. And that's why I love when you pray, because you're always like, forgive me, Father. Like, mm-hmm. confession, so huge. Like, mm-hmm. confess. Like, we blow it. Like, well, it says gonna... he doesn't hear your prayers. Yeah. If we're going to blow it. We're going to blow confess. it today. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, Have it's, I blown it today yet? Not yet. No, I, I always. I, it's going to go I, down. It's going to go <laughs> down, though. I, I, I always love it. that. I, 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 a, lot of, a lot of mornings I find myself waking up and I'm like, Lord, I like love you. And so far today, I've lived a perfect life and <laughs> I haven't sinned. I haven't done anything wrong. But in five seconds, I'm going to get out of bed. I'm going to need you. <laughs> like, that's truth. Hey, I, I'll tell you this. <laughs> when you have as many kids as I have. Yes. Proving that you're Latino. Oh, you, you got like. Yeah. My, my four, dad, four under yeah, four. four, four kids. Yeah. I have four kids. My my wife, her family's uh, from Argentina, and the other half is uh, German and uh, Swiss. And then my dad's Mexico City, yeah. Spanish, yeah, German, and my mom's white. So, but I do have that Latino. That's why four kids have come out. Yeah, and we maybe more. No, no <laughs> more, no more. <laughs> but you know, you wake up. Yeah, you go downstairs. Yeah, do you wake up early? I wake up early, but yeah. my kids wake up. Ri- well, a couple of them wake up at different times. See, yeah. what's been going on lately? Just yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah. not going to get this whole kid thing. No, right no, now, I hear you. We got time. But yeah. we got other Dude, they've been raiding my bed lately. Oh. Like, literally, I'm in bed in the middle of the night. One's in there, and then I, I, seven. Some, someone moves. <laughs> Somehow. And all of a sudden, I get kicked in the face, <laughs> and I wake up and I look, and it's my son. Mm-hmm. My wife ended up I get, getting my son, I guess. I didn't hear him, so she got my son, and he's kicking me in the face. Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden, I hear some more noise, and I look up, and there's another kid in the bed. Yeah, yeah. They've just been migrating right, right, lately. But anyway, with yeah. all that said, yeah, that will make me start sinning right there. Yeah, on my spot. absolutely. Then, uh, no, but then you go downstairs, and and dude, the kids are just going crazy in yeah. the morning. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm like in the morning, I like to like, I don't know how you are, but I need to like focus. I need to yeah. like when I get up, I get my coffee. I'm like, okay, what does this day look like? Kind of like think it out. Then I want to get my, in a perfect world, get my devotions, read, study, stretch, you know, because I'm all injured, um, stretch. And then from (laughs) that, from exactly from that point, (laughs) then I go about my day, but you can go downstairs and dude, everyone could be going crazy. crazy. It could just get crazy and you could just be angry in the morning and just like, just like, just 
No, no. It, 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 and for me, I, I you're have, like you're I already to, set off. I have to. I have to wake up early, and and it's so everyone's in bed still. And, oh, so and, you get up like real early. Yeah, I'm. I'm a. I'm a five thirty guy. Maybe earlier if need be, and if. So here's the thing. When you say God, like your will, your way, like I'm yeah. opening the door and when he'll wake you up in the middle of the night uh-huh. and you better like check in because yeah. he does it for a reason. There's yeah. a purpose. And you, you, we don't understand what's going on. And that's perfect illustration of the times right now. Mm-hmm. We can't understand it. But mm-hmm. God knows. God is in all things. Mm-hmm. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, omni everything, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. beginning and the end. And we have to be able to tune in and get turned on and know that God is trying to speak to us and listen. And I think that's, that for me, that's, I got to be in the word every day. So let's talk, I'm yes. Blown, I'm blown it. Let's talk about that for the listeners to kind of give them a little bit, let's like, yeah. break this down a little bit more for yeah. them. So what, what time do you uh, go to bed at night? Uh, probably around 11. 11. Yeah. Okay, then you get up at 5.30? Yeah, 5.30. Yeah. And then from there, what do you, what's your next way? What do you do for devotion? Do you, so, you start? So I, I usually wake up before the alarm just cause I'm, I'm trained yeah. yep. and I, I'm already just like, Lord, I'm, I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, I don't know what the day's going to breed, but I pray that I'm faithful. I pray that I'm obedient. I pray. I just pray, pray. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just, there's songs. Sometimes there's songs. Sometimes there's this. Yeah. And then I roll right out of bed and I told Sonny that I, I, I do, um, 25 pushups. Like okay. just because I got to get my head going. And so that's what the, gets you going. Get, yeah. get the blood moving. And then I go make the pot of coffee, sit down with the word. Uh, I love the through the word by uh, a study. And so I usually listen and then I'm underlying stuff, studying it, thinking about it, praying about it. How long it. is that process? Um, 15, 20, 15, mm-hmm. 20. And then I try to like get into maybe some worship music before things start rolling. And like I, I try not to tune in the world. Like I try not to look because yesterday, like it, perfect illustration. People were texting me crazy all day, right? Or like right away, like at 5.30. I have people from the East Coast that are, te- you know, you're like, boom, 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 boom. And you're like, I, I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to answer. And already I'm like, I'm not in the right space. I got to get back in that space. It's hard. And so like my thing is if I'm not in the word, like I know I'm going to get set off. I know that I'm going to sin. I know. I I'm agree. Like, I'm like, I'm done. 100%. Yeah. That's why it's all about me <laughs> making that move First to the coffee machine. Yes. Amen. Cause you do co- you do uh, push-ups. Okay. I do co- I do co- you do, I do both. I do, do twenty five cups of coffee. You do twenty five <laughs> push-ups. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I uh, that's a good. I actually no. Uh, I have a friend that's a big. He was like a big time jock, like linebacker yeah. for USC and the yeah. whole thing. And he says that right when you wake up, hey, push-ups just get you going. Yep. Um. So anyway, get your uh, metabolism it, it, going. Engage, it engages your mind because you can be like because I do coffee too and I love my coffee, but like I can be like just like going through the word and just like uh, and. Like the push-ups, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, get you going. Let's I'm, go. I'm gonna try that tonight or tomorrow morning. Perfect. Um, Let me know. So, from there, then yeah. you got to get up there, and then what I'll do is, um, I just I start uh, doing my stretches, right? And I, I, I know I have K I, I I have K Wave yeah. on, yeah, and I, I just do. Uh, it's actually perfect because you need to study, yeah, and you need to stretch anyway, because we're both, yeah. you know, well, God, God's word stretches you. Yeah, well, there Boom. you go. Get stretched both double, ways. Double. So if you're sitting there. Yeah. If you're sitting there and you're doing your stretches, yeah. right? It takes it takes I don't know, it takes like 30 minutes or so yeah. or more. I mean, it's actually I'm probably doing it for about an hour. That's so good. Uh ish, hour ish is the whole pro- I, I, program. I want I want to stretch through you like osmosis. So, <laughs> so, but when you do that, what you're doing is you're you're literally your body feels amazing. Yes. Obviously, and yeah. it's and it's good for you as we get older to do sports and stuff. But you're sitting there, you're stretching, but you're hearing yeah. these Bible studies. Yeah. It's not like you're distracted. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're stretching. So you're boom. Your your whole body's getting, you know, in motion. Yeah. Keeping limber. And then you're getting the studies. And then right when I'm done from there, then I transfer over to my my desk. Yeah. And then I open the Bible and I read some there. And then it's I so got good. I got like three devotions that I that pick apart. So good. And then if I'm gonna drive somewhere, yeah. Then I'll if I have time, I'll get on the I'll get on a um yeah, I'll uh, listen to another study or whatever it is, driving somewhere yeah. else. But at least I got that hour do, in the morning do, do, and your day changes. Do, do you have a favorite pastor right now? Like put someone that you're listening to that really just like. So right now. Yeah, I've been listen- it changes. It changes. Yeah, yeah. I've been listening to a lot of Tony Evans. OK, I like Tony. Um, because it, they're 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 really fiery nugget yeah. um, life application gotcha. with 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 scripture attached yeah, yeah. to he's a Bible teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I've been I've been missing like. 
going through like Calvary Chapel pastors because they go through like the Bible. Yeah, the word, like straight like, up, just like straight up the word. You know, you know my, yeah. my one of my favorite pastors is Mark Clark. He's out of Canada. Uh, this is Village Church. Uh, he is an amazing apologetics, and he will spend like he spent three years in 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 a gospel. Like, yeah, he'll I bet. just like rip it. And yeah. but he's so smart. And the crazy thing about Mark Clark is he has Tourette's. He's like, you know, like yeah. and then it's like, how could God use someone like that? And like he's amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah, but it changes though, because I, you know, you no, go no, through you different go through, pastors and different. You need. Well, it. I went through. I went through the whole Bible with yeah. Chuck Smith yes. from from Genesis to Revelations on on that app. Or so it was good. actually I started with CDs. That took yeah. years, and yeah. that was like he was like each each chapter was an hour. Yeah, and some of the stuff he was actually an hour and a half uh, in the Old Testament stuff he was yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was yeah. But. Then, you know, Skip Isaac, um, yeah. I hear on the radio, I hear, I, I've been hearing Ray Bentley a lot okay. on uh, Sunday mornings. Yeah. When I, my stretch time on Sunday mornings, yeah. it's Ray Bentley. Oh, there you Greg go. Greg Laurie. Yeah, yeah, that's whoever uh, it is. No, I, 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 it's like, it's my times. Yeah. And oh, and then some old fool, uh, uh, M- McGee or something. Yeah, G. Vernon McGee. He's on the radio. Dude, he is awesome. I hear him. I love him. The Bible bus. Yeah, the Bible <laughs> bus. <laughs> So yeah, that's those are my times. No, no, so, it's, it, it, that's it. Like I get in the car and sometimes I'm driving and that's what I'm listening. To. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I, you cannot get enough of the word. Like I'm going to tell you that right now. You cannot get enough. And you just got to keep. You just got to keep um, eating it. And the know? crazy Feeding thing. It. The crazy thing. Like this morning, it was it was all about uh, Jeremiah, and I was reading Jeremiah about how like he like before you were in your mother's womb, I called you, I destined you, and this whole idea that. God's God was on the move in utero like like he's he's anointed us before we were even here and he's like created us and that's why we need to like figure out like what's the daily assignment what are we supposed to be doing like where are we at like and yet you know if we're gonna lead to our own understanding if we're gonna we're gonna like worship politics and we're gonna worship money and we're gonna worship women we're gonna worship whatever we're gonna worship if we're not like plugged in and I always think like we have to be tuned in like a radio station needs to be dialed in mm. to be turned on. I think with that said, I think that even like with the state of what's going on in the world yeah. with the with whole like lockdowns and, and pandemic and COVID and all this stuff, it's actually creating more idle time. So people are getting into more trouble. Oh, absolutely. People are falling away. Oh yeah. I mean, I've been, dist- I got distracted, you know, I've, I mean, I felt those distractions coming in. I've, I've accomplished a lot you yeah. know, during the season for sure. But there's been those times of the, of the, the, the just the creeping of of just um you know time comfort, C- comfort. yeah just like the, like lazy days like, yeah I, I mean and that's a sad thing and i i've seen some churches close down and we're just gonna go to zoom and I'm, i've heard from a lot of other pastors they're like we're not doing that and you know again you're wrong no matter what you're doing you're wrong you're 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 horrible right now and then and ultimately like the thing is I know about myself is if I get comfortable I'm and I, I can have my coffee and I can be in my jammies and I can listen to a, a, a sermon, then I might not go back to church. And and so I, I'm, I'm fo- always, I'm going to go to church. Yeah. Like I'm going to do the routine because I need that. that. Okay. That's a good word. You just said routine. I think what happened and what I've, I'm, I'm just going to pe- speak from like personal experience. Yeah. Um, because I think my whole routine got messed up. Oh yeah. Right away. That's what happened, and yeah. and I think a lot of people can relate to that. What For happened sure. is why people have got sidetracked, is that the routine of oh I go to church on these days. Yeah. All of a sudden church is shut down. Well now that routine is broken. Yeah. So they fill those things with other things. Oh yeah. And or even just like um, wh- wh- whatever it is, routine. The routines have got shattered, and yeah. that's how a lot of people got distracted and yeah. fell away from their faith. Yeah. Um, and routine is something that even with me moving around, cause you know, I just moved again Absolutely. And trying to get my whole routine. I didn't even have an office for a long time. And now right. I'm like, okay, I got my office. I'm like, Oh, this is like where I pray. This is where I study the Bible. Yeah. When I had the last time I had an office is the last time I was actually teaching shine Bible studies. And I was going through the gospels. Wow. So now that I, that was three years ago because yeah. I was touring. No, I've been touring ever since, but now that I have my office, I got all my um, commentaries back yeah. and I'm like, I got my Moody commentary. I got my John Corson, you know, all these ones. And I'm just like, shoot, I should start teaching the Bible again. So I'm getting all fired up there again. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. So anyway, That's but because so because the routine gets shattered. Yes. And then you, you, uh, and, and sometimes routine needs to get shattered. Like yeah. you gotta, you, yeah. because like, you want to get stuck in a rut. You, 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 
Who, who, who said that? Uh, the difference uh, between a rut? And uh, a, that's uh, Chuck Smith. There you go. The difference between <laughs> a rut and a grave is the w- width and, and the, the depth. depth. Yeah, and sometimes it. you got to get that thing shattered and, yeah. and break out, not get stuck. Well, and, God is making all things new. And so a lot of us right now in this pandemic, we want to go back. We want, oh, we just want to go back to the way it was. We're not going back. What if back. it never? No, we're not going back. Yeah. We're not going back. There is no going back. Yeah. Like, it, it's almost like we got to go forward yeah. because God is moving. And why would you want to go back to settle for what God, God really wants to give his best. And yeah. God is going to show up and he's going to use this. I'm like, uh, with the election. It's like the Israelites, like, remember? Yeah. Israelites. Oh, yeah. but back in Egypt, we, we had, had this. We, we had, had the bread. leagues. We, we had the water. They, we had the Nile. We had the. <laughs> no. God's what about the hail? What God, about the frogs? God's best is yet to come. Yeah. And we can't, we have to look in the future, yes. not the past. Yes. Okay. So we got 10 minutes left. Yeah. So what else do you want to talk about? Well, do you want to go uh, uh, more into election stuff or more into, I mean. Well, looking at, okay, sure. Let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. So we've seen that um, Trump is no longer, oh, well, he's still president. He's just banned from. All he's just banned things. from everything. And a lot of people put their faith and hope in yeah. in a president. Yeah. And I was excited to see what what uh, was going to happen right. for another four years. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he did a lot of great things. Yeah, uh, prayer in school and, and different things. And now you have like the ultra liberal uh, yeah. agenda inside the Senate and and all these things. So now you're seeing that they're talking about reversing a lot of. Yep. things that were done, yep. Yep. which is going to be interesting, again, back to the church. We are the church. Yes. Like, not the church of the building. It will yeah. affect the building, but actually the church. And I think that this is going to be a time in history that we need to study the scriptures. We need to study study Bible prophecy. Yeah. Discern. Um, you know, you hear about, uh, you know, Iran, yeah. uh, uh, Iraq. Iraq's one of those ones that are going to come against Israel. Yeah. Um, and Israel even said when when Iran said that they were going to flex on Trump, they were coming for Trump for the one year anniversary of a, of, yep. of the the drone attack. Yeah, Israel said we are ready to attack. So yeah. now Israel said that they were ready to take out Iran or go after him. Yeah, and now Trump is no longer going to be if if everything right. goes right. Right. the way right. it's looking, yeah. Trump will no longer be in power. And the Democratic Party doesn't re- want to recognize Israel. They don't care about them. Right. Now, Israel is on their own. Yes. So Bible prophecy, when you start looking at it, it's like right. Turkey, Iran, uh, 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 Mogog, Russia. Yeah. Um, um, what else is it? There's a, there's a couple other ones that were Jordan and all yeah. them that will come against yeah. Israel. So now, as we're seeing all this stuff going on, there could easily be an invasion. Right. On Israel in the next couple of weeks when Trump is no longer in power, and then we'd be looking at Ezekiel 38 and 34, yeah. or 38 and 39. Well, I, I think I think we, we, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because God makes the impossible possible. Yeah. And and um, I, I really, like in this season, like what I'm praying for is truth and justice. Yeah. I was like, man, and... Um, I just know that God will use this. And ultimately, and and I'm I'm I've been trying less to figure it out and more to just be like I can't wait for you to show up. Like yeah. I can't wait cuz yeah. like his heart is that none shall perish. Yeah. His heart is that like uh everyone gets redeemed. Like right. everyone comes to know. And um so this is again this is all a setup. Like mm-hmm. so sometimes like uh you know when when we have a setback it's ultimately a setup for a great comeback. Right. And I, I think Jesus, I know it. He said he's coming back. So I'm just watching it. And going, so, with all, yeah. so with that said, yeah, we're looking at Bible prophecy of, yes. of things aligning. It's like a chessboard. Yes. Oh, absolutely. But while all that, so when you're seeing that stuff aligning, all that stuff points to is that Jesus is coming. Yeah. So if Jesus is coming, he's clearly set up all this stuff. And I, yeah. I truly believe, oh, I think everyone that believes that absolutely. this is all set up to sift the church, to wake up the church. Yes, yes. To, to um, wake up. It's, it's that last, it's yes. that last call no. like, hey, let's do this. I'm coming and let's get ready yeah. and, and really see who are the true believers. No, y- y- there's a difference between believing and faith. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of people that believe in Jesus. But there's not a lot of people that walk it out mm-hmm. and walk in faith. 
And I think he is right now, like you said, sifting and trying to wake people up. And, and I'm always amazed that people are like, well, you know, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. You're not reading your Bible. You're not discerning. You're not you're not looking at prophecy. You're not like I was in Daniel um, and, and, and Daniel 12 and just watching this stuff go down. And you're like, dude, you predicted all of that to happen. And yet all of it again. And then the idea I had with Daniel is like, dude, he walked through the fire. He like the lion's den. But like ultimately it was because he was faithful early on and said, I'm not going to eat anything, sacrifice to idols. I'm going to do this and I'm going to consecrate myself. I'm going to, I'm going to live this out. And then Daniel got to experience all these kingdoms, all this persecution, and yet prophesy the end times are coming. Yeah. And that's, you know, like, let's just be aware and wise. Like, and I think we need to be in the word yeah, and we need to be talking like this because you know what? We don't know what we don't know until we don't know it. And this is the times that we're in. And it's exciting because I was talking to my wife and yeah. yes, last night, and you know she's talking about it. she's like what like what's the great reset mean and you know yeah. this whole thing and again it all comes down to the main the one world government and the agenda. Yeah. But I said you know we you know that we read the Bible we know we know the future we know what's going to happen. To me, I'm not worried. Right. I'm excited, and in my mindset, I'm just like, okay, God, what do you want to do? Like, what are you going to do? Like, what's our next? Like, what do we yeah. do now? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. we have this opportunity. Yeah. How would we know that you want us? Like, you keep quoting over and over on the show. You keep saying that none will perish. Yeah. Well, we know that you want none to perish. So in order for none to perish or people not to perish, we have to go out and give the gospel and introduce yes. them to the good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, death on the cross, resurrection, Absolutely. and salvation, and the bloodshed, yes. forgiveness of sins. Yes. So with that said... What do you? How do you want to use this in this time? Yes, and that's basically the that's that's what we need to encourage people with is that it's exciting. Yes, and God wants to do something, but you got to be available. You got to be available, and you gotta you gotta be tuned in. Like yeah. like it not be what Ryan thinks, not yeah. be what Tom thinks. Yeah, be like Lord, what do you want me to do right now in this conversation through these people? What what what? And it's like the praying with a ceasing, not just being like on your knees constantly, but Lord, like. What, what do you want me to talk about? What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say to this person? And I'll tell you, God will give you that wisdom. God will give you that knowledge. And I've had so many opportunities to just talk with random people where all of a sudden they're like, dude, how do you know? Like, I'm like, God is yeah. good. And he loves you and he wants what's best for you. And I think that's really like we have we have one life to live and one life to give and we'll be known by what we gave. And I hope that we're giving a testimony of how good God is because yeah. that's ultimately it. All right, we're gonna wrap this show up. We have a, we have a few minutes left. Yeah. Um, check out the uh, first of all, check out uh, Tom's past show. Go to the whosoever's dot com or our app. You'll see Tom Gillis. It's his testimony about him being a, a pro snowboarder doing yeah. world records, uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, all that stuff. But he finds God, and now God's using him. Uh, check out the who stores we have products. Yeah, we have the most amazing shirts, socks. I'm a sockaholic. Go get your socks, man. They're the most comfortable get socks. We got them all. We got stripes. We got tie dyes. We got blacks. We got whites. We got purples. We got pinks. You got the stripe pirate right, tie dyes. Those are my favorite ones. We yeah, got those. I got I got a couple pairs for Christmas. His, uh, beautiful, <laughs> nice. Well, and then we we're Legs. gonna have a, we got we got a video or a movie, a movie coming out. We we, well, there's a movie on the website now. Yes. Yes. It's our Kill the Noise Mexico tour, but we have a movie coming out. Yeah. And we have a new movie being edited, and I got the first draft today oh. for Montana tour. Were you on Montana? I wasn't on Montana. You were in Idaho. I was on Idaho. So we got Montana, but yeah. then we have Florida going into yeah. edit. So we have a couple new movies being edited oh, right now. Oh, for sure. So we have actually have three movies coming out. And I out. can't wait to do the skate tour whenever we're doing that. That's going to drop oh, soon. Oh, yeah, California skate tour. But Biden's saying $100. Hundred day lockdown. We might have to tour Orange County because Orange County's rebelling. I know. Well, I don't care. Let's just go do it. They need to hear it. Let's we, go do it. Exactly. That never stopped us before. No. Nope. Uh, what else do we ask, got? Ask uh, for forgiveness, not permission. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, what else do we have going on? Oh, I want to talk about this book. Yeah. Because I this is actually the first show that I'm actually plugging it. So I have oh, a new so book cool. coming out. Kill the noise. Uh, I wrote it during the pandemic when we went into the lockdown. I started writing. I got it finished. It's edited. It's uh, if you look up. Uh, Ryan Reese book on uh, Google it uh, or Ryan Reese Kill the Noise. You'll find it in Target, Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, Hachette Publishing, 
Um, I don't know. Cause there's and, and, and what I know about you, this is going to be a book for kids. This is going to be a book for the church. This is going to be a book for the unchurched. This is going to be a book for your, if you're a parent and you're struggling with a wayward son, this is a book for you because that was your story. Yeah. And God still gets the glory because yeah. he, he does the impossible. And that's, I know, I know that this book is going to be off the charts because it's for everyone. Everyone needs to be Everybody. reading in the church, out of the church, parent, grandparent, youngin. Get it's it. true. No, it, 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 I didn't write it for like, because people go, oh, it's going to be for youth. Yeah. No, it's actually for it's for everyone. No, absolutely. And uh, it's a faith building book. No, I, 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 I could see it being huge for those parents of teens that yeah. are out of control right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause that your, your, your word, your story is going to speak to them right now. And it's the biggest thing. What we need to be doing is praying, praying, pray for your kids, pray yep. for your life, pray for your wife, pray for everyone. And this book is going to be awesome. Thanks. Well, there's the plug right there. There it is. <laughs> All right. The whosoever, or it's called Ryan Reese Kill the Noise. Check it out. Go to the whosoever's.com, uh, our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. And we'll be back on this show next week, Saturday night live. Saturday night live. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.